The world is absolutely filled with biodiversity, from the smallest microorganisms to the titanic forms of whales. Among this massive diversity is the spiders. Found within the arachnid order Araniae, this diverse group of organisms can be found in almost every landmass in the world aside from Antarctica. They range from as small as a pinhead to as large as dinner plates, and have adapted to a menagerie of ecosystems. Spiders fill a host of different niches from building webs and to tackling prey out of the air. To many, they are a source of fear and discomfort. However, without these little eight-legged beings, the world would be vastly different today. Contrary to popular belief, spiders are far from dangerous, despite the fact that most, if not all, spiders house venom within their hollow fangs. For the most part, spiders are only willing to hunt and kill things smaller than or slightly larger than themselves. Insects are a bulk of what most spiders eat, with other organisms mixing into the diet from time to time. What spiders eat and how much they eat is what has grounded some of their ecologic and economic importance. So spiders, along with pretty much any invertebrate animal, are going to be filling a lot of different niches, right? So a niche is a particular role, um, some people might call it a job, to me it's a bit humanistic, right? But a, a certain role that they take part in in the environment. Now, ecologically speaking, spiders are going to be fitting into the food chain very similar to a higher level predator. Not an apex predator, uh, but a higher level one. Uh, so they're going to be consuming large amounts of other types of animals, whether that be insects, other arachnids, maybe even some small mammals or birds or reptiles. Um, and, and it really depends on the ecosystem itself. Uh, but they're going to be found in almost every ecosystem on Earth. And so they do really fit in. Additionally, uh, they add a lot of food items for other animals as well. So just like those insects that they're eating, they're going to be predated upon as well. And so you're going to have all of these animals relying on that food network. Plus, structurally speaking, uh, they're going to be filling a lot of different roles with where they're going to be building their homes, their, their webs, if they are a web building spider, um, their burrows, if they're a burrowing spider, right? And this is going to add some variation to the landscape itself that can have some ecological effects. Spiders are among the most common predators in the world, eating a cumulative weight of around 800 million metric tons every year. They eat a huge variety of prey, with many species being generalists, meaning they're willing to eat many things, and some being specialists, eating, eating only certain types of things. There is even one spider, which is mostly herbivorous, eating off of a species of acacia tree. Catching their prey is another area entirely, with different spiders employing a diverse set of methods in hunting. There are active, there are active hunters, such as the wolf spider, and lazy web builders, such as the humpback orb weaver and spiders which walk across the sur surface of the water to catch their prey. Among the web builders, there are different methods of hunting. Some build sticky webs, while others build mazes of webs that tangle up their prey, and funnel weavers which lay out a sticky funnel-shaped carpet of web often in the grass. All these species and many more affect the environment in different ways through their homes and the ways they hunt. So why are spiders important economically? How are spiders important economically? So that, that's a pretty kind of lofty question, but it's, it's an exciting one because it's something that we haven't really focused on too much as, as a human society as of yet. Now with that, the first thing that comes to mind um, is that the economic benefit of the medical side of things, right? So um, you're going to have different potential health benefits that spiders can be beneficial to. Right, so um, you're going to have spiders and the exploration of their venom as medicines, right, or components of their venom being used to create medicines, right. The the healthcare industry just in the United States alone is billions, if not trillions, of dollars worth of different medicines and, and treatments for different ailments, right. And so, especially spider venom can be used to help that. Now. If we go to a biomechanical side of things, if we're looking at what spiders can also produce, the silk, right? Um, silk is one of the strongest, if not the strongest, naturally occurring substance that comes out of a land-dwelling um, invertebrate, and its prehensile, prehensile strength is 
many times that of steel. And so different engineers and, and biomechanists uh, and all that are trying to figure out how to utilize that substance. And it can make a huge revolution in different engineering uh, practices throughout the world. Um, and so oftentimes it would eventually have a cost benefit. Um, right now, it's a little bit time intensive and, and uh, work intensive to get that spider silk, but if we can figure out a way to harness that same type of, uh, of strength in that silk, it, it would totally revolutionize the industry. Now, if we're looking at just specific effects of spiders out in the wild, um, there are actually a lot of uses that you can have for pest control, a natural pest control. Um, there are farmers who, having large fields, um, who will actually go up and release spiders into their fields to help keep the crops down. There was a study done in Europe, actually, that showed that if farmers left kind of a natural buffer around their farms, uh, where spiders can actually overwinter or shelter whenever the, the field has been plowed or, or has harvested it's just an empty field, um, if, it, if they allowed that buffer to form where spiders can take refuge to then infest the field whenever they plant it next, it, they actually saw a significant decrease in the amount of pesticides needed, which directly translates into money saved by those farmers. Um, and so the agricultural industry can save millions, if not billions, worldwide um, utilizing this type of, of theory. Arthropods as a whole are a massively diverse group with easily over a million known species today. Within them, the spiders make up an estimated 100,000 species. As such, there are many unique spider species, such as the silkhenge spider, amimic spiders, trap jaw spiders, and spitting spiders. The silkhenge spider is a mysterious newly discovered spider species which builds odd structures around their egg sacs. It is unknown what the purpose of this is, and so far, only the spiderlings have confirmably been seen. Ant mimic spiders are a type of jumping spider which have evolved to resemble ants both to deter predators and to gain access to their favorite food, ant larvae. These ants sneak into ant colonies with the intent of consuming the ants' precious larvae and get through by mimicking the ants and their pheromones. A trap jaw spiders? Um, so these are spiders that have a really, really forceful closing of their chalicery, um, what we call the jaws, right? And they open up and there are specialized hairs on the inside of, of where their, their chalicery would be that trigger those jaws to snap shut and it's, it's barely milliseconds um, is how long it takes for those jaws to close. Uh, and then also the spitting spiders are kind of cool too. Um, being able to, to projectile shoot out silk um, from your venom glands mixed with that venom to just completely immobilize your prey is quite impressive.